Here at the Royal Brompton and Harefield Hospitals, we have been leading an international effort to explore the role of gene therapy to help treat people with heart or lung diseases. Heart failure is where the heart is damaged and weak and cannot support the circulation and the blood flow around the body. It is a serious condition as it gives lots of symptoms, makes people feel tired, weak and breathless and unfortunately it also shortens life and people can die prematurely from this nasty condition. Here at Imperial College in our research laboratories we've been studying for many years the underlying biology of the heart muscle and how it becomes weak in the condition of heart failure. Through these studies we've identified a very important gene called CIRCA which in the healthy heart is important for normal heart function and that gene is turned down or off in the weakened heart as it fatigues. Our further research studies here funded by the British Heart Foundation and the Medical Research Council have shown that restoring the gene with a gene therapy technology improves the weakened heart. We've taken these observations from the laboratory and moved them into our clinics at the Royal Brompton Hospital and started to participate in the first ever gene therapy trials for people with heart failure. In our cardiovascular biomedical research unit funded by the NIHR, we have enrolled the first ever UK people with heart failure into a global trial. Initial results from America were encouraging. Our current study, for which we're the largest recruitment centre in Europe, has shown that delivering the gene therapy appears to be safe. However, the benefits are yet to be seen. And I think this reflects the challenges of introducing a new technology such as gene therapy. However, more research will be performed and we hope one day to be able to make people with this condition live longer and without the symptoms they're suffering at the moment. Our interest in gene therapy has been on the disease cystic fibrosis, which is the commonest lethal inherited disease in this country. There is a gene which is called CFTR, which is responsible for that. Evolution has made the lungs to keep things out. What you're trying to do with gene therapy is put something in. So not surprisingly, that's actually very difficult. And what you have to do is you have to carry the gene in, and you only have two choices. You can either use liposomes, which are fat globules, and the fat merges with the fat of the cell membrane and allows the gene to slip in, or you can use viruses. In response to this challenge, we gather together everybody in the United Kingdom who is interested in translational CF gene therapy, our own group here at the Royal Brompton and Imperial College, and the groups at Oxford and Edinburgh University into the UK CF Gene Therapy Consortium. And over a series of many years, funded largely through the Cystic Fibrosis Trust, we undertook the obvious sort of experiments. Which is the best liposome, the best fat globule? Which is the best formulation of the gene? Which is the right delivery device? And that led us into a series of early phase clinical trials in cystic fibrosis patients, where we assess the safety and the efficacy of that work. That led us now into the world's first phase 2b clinical trial in which we looked at 120 cystic fibrosis patients and we looked for the first time to see whether gene therapy can make a difference to the lung function, something that matters to the CF patients. And this was a study that was undertaken in part here at the Royal Brompton Hospital and in part at Edinburgh and was funded through the National Institute of Health Research's EME programme. So the next step will be we will be linking in with pharmaceutical companies to produce a much bigger trial, probably across several continents, to see if we can verify and expand the promising data. But very excitingly, we also have a new virus that can deliver the gene. And this is the only virus we know of that can be repeatedly administered and is some 200 times more efficient than the liposomes, the fat globules we've just used. And that's going into a first-in-man clinical trial early next year. Clearly gene therapy is going through an exciting period now, however we always need to just be cautious. Any new therapy always goes through this, it's going to cure everything and then there are problems 
and we just need to leave it enough time to mature and develop through those issues. Now one of the key problems has been the delivery and as I think you've been hearing both from the cardiological and from our perspective, we're beginning to solve those delivery problems and that leads to the fact that we might be able to translate these platform technologies to other diseases. So in parallel with that, the other exciting development has been Genomics England and the 100,000 Genome Project identifying more and more of the genes that are responsible for rare diseases and the National Institute for Health Research similarly having a focus on rare diseases. And so those platforms of the new diseases come fitting very well with the new platforms of the gene delivery technologies that we've got. And of course the Royal Brompton is very well placed given our focus on these rare diseases to take advantage of it.